Welcome to Eagle News of Redeemed Assembly of Jesus Christ, where we keep you in the loop. In the spirit of hospitality, are there any guests in our midst? If you are here, please wave your hand. Let's give them a great big Redeemed Assembly welcome. We count it an honor and a privilege to have you here in our midst today. And if you would so kindly text the word welcome to 804-977-0174 or ask one of our ushers for a guest packet. Again, welcome to Redeemed Assembly of Jesus Christ. Lives are being changed, questions are being answered, and our youth are growing. Join our youth on first and third Tuesdays at 8 p.m. for their Zoom chat and learn. This is a safe place for our youth to vent, share, and grow. For further information, you can text YOUTH to 804-977-0174 or Contact Tion Thorne at tionthorne at yahoo.com. Are you or your child or someone you know interested in the ministry of expression through dance? Well, see Danielle Branch if you are, and let's take music and fine arts to the next. Ladies, you've been asking and we heard you. Come out on July the 8th at 12 p.m. for our Girls' Day Out. We will be at the Boathouse and Short Pump Mall getting to know each other in our special way. If you're interested, text LUNCH to 804-977-0174 or see Danielle Branch. Let's make it do what it do. It's your birthday, we gon' party like it's your birthday. We gon' party like it's your birthday. We gon' party like it's your birthday. Hey, hey, it's your birthday. Lady Ware. Let's give it up for Lady Harris. Woo! Yes, Lady Harris will be turning 80 on October the 20th, and in celebration of her and Bishop, we will have our annual Legends Ball held Saturday, October the 21st at 10 a.m at the Virginia Crossings Hotel and Conference Center. Tickets are $150 for adults and $50 for children 4 through 12. Adults save $50 and children save $10 if paid by September the 1st. If you're interested, tickets are now available. Yes, now available. You can scan the QR code or simply pay through our channels of payment. But let's everybody rally together and make this the best one ever. Let's give it up for our pastor. Look at your neighbor and ask him, are you a Bible class attender? Answer. Brothers and sisters, Bible class is essential for the growth of the Christian. Join us on Wednesdays at 7.30 on our Facebook or our YouTube channel. Your likes give us exposure. So help us by liking, sharing, and commenting. See you soon. Here at Redeemed Assembly, you're never alone. You have loving pastors and brothers and sisters that care for you. You have an army of support. Here are some ways in which we can better serve you. Again, thank you for choosing Redeemed Assembly. Have a miraculous week. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. Give them your best praise. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come before you all today, and we just come to lift you up, God. We came here to get something to you and from you. In the name of Jesus, God, we thank you, God, for your awesome power and your presence.
your majesty on this day. We thank you for waking us up this morning and starting us on our way and clothing us in our right mind. It's a lot to be said to be clothed in your right mind. Hallelujah, glory to God. We thank you that you came in as the Prince of Peace on this morning. Hallelujah, thank you, Jesus, for opening our mouths and our eyes to see another day that you kept us. And so, Father, we just come to give you honor and glory on the day. We come, God, to participate in your presence, oh God. We come to get what you came to give in the name of Jesus. We came with expectation and we come boldly with authority as you have said that we could in the name of Jesus. We know that that one person here will lead the same way that they came in the name of Jesus. But that you charge and you challenge and you change us in the name of Jesus. And you prepare for the next seven days, oh God. None of us don't know what we shall be facing. But we're going to give you praise on credit, oh God, because you knew before we even got to this day in the name of Jesus. And so, Father, we ask that you walk the highways and that you set beside each and every individual in this place and that you move by your might and your power in the name of Jesus and that you go into the virtual universe for the countries that's watching, oh God, and you speak the word to them in the name of Jesus and you heal and deliver and set free on the virtual universe, on the airways, on the highways, on the highways, in the place, in the building, in the church, in the streets, in the community. Oh God, in the place of work, in the place where we get groceries, God, wherever we go. Get gas, God, be there in the name of Jesus. And so, Father, we pray for an awakening in the spirit, oh God. Oh God, that we don't walk around like we love it, but we are awake in the name of Jesus, giving you praise, honor, and glory for what you've done. In Jesus' name we pray. And our scripture for the day will be Matthew 18 and 19. And it says, again, I say unto you that if two of you shall agree on earth as touching anything that they shall ask, it shall be done for them of my Father, which is in heaven. Give God praise. Magnify the Lord with me. Yes. Magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. Amen. Amen. Come on, lift your hands, open up your hearts, let God in.
this I'm just overwhelmed to think he would receive my praise he was waiting this morning waiting for my praise he did everything I'm here because he brought me over I'm here because he kept me I'm in a good mind because he kept my mind the king of glory the king of glory I don't think it even hit us what it is for him to allow us mortals to worship him and not only just to worship him that he wanted and craved he craved our worship he craves our worship and then he allows us to give him praise hallelujah so great that the angels couldn't even look on him mm. and yet he let mortals praise him after some of us done walked all kinds of ways he still wants your praise the Lord is exalted the Lord is exalted on high hallelujah it is indeed a privilege to be here today amen thank God hallelujah hunt somebody and tell them I'm glad you overcame amen tell them I couldn't have had church today without you because it got to be at least two or three of us <laughs> I'm glad you overcame it got to be at least two or three of us I'm glad you overcame hallelujah amen hallelujah I don't think we appreciate one another hallelujah because when I said holy you said holy let's try that holy 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 and that's the way that's the mice we're getting used to because that's the way they are in heaven one course was said holy and the other one was said holy 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 and let me what you know what we do that for 25 30 minutes well five minutes then you get tired but can you imagine they get up for a hallelujah course and do it for a thousand years what they're going to get up and do a hallelujah course for a thousand years and it's going to be like one day. I'm going to be in the band. I'm going to, I'm going to be there. I'm going to, I'm going to be there. Because all we are doing now is practicing. I'm practicing the glory. Hallelujah. Glory. I might miss out on a whole lot of things, but I, go, I can't miss out on glory. Can't miss out on that. What a mighty God we serve. I'm still excited about Jesus. I'm excited about him. All right. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. Praise the Lord, everybody. Bishop, good morning. Giving honor to God who's the head of my life. Um, just to be quick, y'all. Um, seven words oh to be kept by the lord um monday i i've been under attack y'all monday you know i work in the field and i work in people's yards and i work with pesticides and things such as that so monday i was working and i started feeling a little weird short-winded you know it's hot outside so of course i'm in the sun what do you do you drink some water <clears throat> you hydrate you sit down for a little while you know you get back to work now us we believe that all you got to do is rest any fellow black men in here know that all you feel like you got to do is get some sleep. So I went home, got some rest, you know, and um, I started having, a, you know, some chest pains. And I was like, okay, I'm going to just take some ibuprofen and some, you know, Advil and just go ahead and sleep. So th those pains continued up until Friday. But Thursday, uh, we were here at rehearsal, and um, I was like, you know what? 
it's something on me, and I, I don't know what it is, and I never stay after rehearsal. I'm usually one of the first people gone. Is that not true? I'm, I'm, I'm out of here, y'all. I'm not even going to lie to you. But something, something told me just to, just to play on Thursday. So Thursday, Brother Stan allowed me to stay, and he was doing some work upstairs, and I just played, and I kept playing, and I kept playing. But before we left, something told me, anoint yourself. So I went over here, and I got some oil, and I put it on my head. And Brother Stan said, yo, he said, you okay? I said, yeah, we were leaving. He, I said, yeah, I'm okay. You know, something going on with my body, but, but God going to do it. I'm going to be all right. And Brother Stan said, yeah, 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 you, you know, I'm touching the green. You know how we are. So um, Friday, I go to work, and uh, by my, to my surprise, they had me go test at the DMV to get my commercial applicator license. Thank God I passed that test. Um, and after I was done testing, they was like, all right, you can go home. I'm like, are you sure you don't want me to go do nobody's yards? No, 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 you go home. So I'm like, okay, I'm going to go home and I'm going to rest. Now, I didn't been having these chest pains. I ain't, I ain't been able to breathe. Like, it's just been crazy. Headache out of the world. Been, just, just been hurting, y'all. So I said, I'm going to go home. I'm going to go to sleep. I get home and I try to go to sleep and I just feel like my heart is trying to jump, jump out of my chest. And I'm like, okay, you know what? Something is going on. So I start praying. God, whatever it is that you're doing, whatever it is that you're doing. Out of nowhere, my mom calls me. Hey, you need to go get checked out. I'm like, what are you talking about? She's like, you just dropped in my spirit. You need to go get checked out. I said, okay. So I go to the hospital. Long story short, I'm in the triage and I'm talking to the lady. And the lady's like, you don't, you, what's your complexion? I'm like, I'm black. I'm okay. <laughs> I'm black, caramel, I don't know, you want me to say Reese's Pieces, what you, what you over to say to you? She said, well, you, you look pretty pale. What are your, you know, what's, why are you here? And I told her, you know, you know, my chest pains, I can't breathe, you know, I'm dizzy here and there. She said, hold up a second. She went and got the acting, the acting doctor that was in the triage, and the, the doctor said, you need to go, we need to get you to the back immediately. So they hooked me up to an EKG machine, and the EKG was all over the place, all over the place. So they took, you know, they said, we need to take blood from you, this and that, blah, 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 blah. I'm like, all right, wh whatever y'all doing, you know, just do it. I'm tired. I want to go to sleep. So I'm laying in the bed, and a doctor comes in the room. She said, Mr. Johnson, how long have you been feeling like this? I said, since Monday. She said, hmm. She said, you have any immediate family in the area? I said, no. You know, my, my family really lives in, you know, they live like three and a half hours away. She said, okay. Um, well, the good thing is that you're alive. She said, but, she said, but the bad thing is that sometime this week, you've had a heart attack. She said, your, your troponin levels are so, they're, they're 10 times the normal level that they're supposed to be for someone. I said, what you mean? I said, a heart attack? She said, what do you do? I said, well, um, I work on people's lawns. I go to church. And I go home. She said, well, whatever God you believe in, he must have done something because... For you, to, for you to be feeling like this all week, she said, you made it all the way to today. Seven days, oh, to be kept by the Lord. She said, you made it all the way to today, and you had the, you had the strength to drive here? I said, yeah, it was a little hard of a drive, but I made it here. She said, okay. Um, well, we, gonna, we need to watch you for a little while because we don't know how recent it is, but your levels are so high, it tells us that it was, it was pretty, pretty recent. So I said, okay, so um, you're telling me I had a heart attack. She said, I'm telling you, you had a heart attack. I said, I said but, I, but, I'm, but I'm not like, going to have another one, am I? She said, well, we don't know about that, but for now, you're here. Yeah. And it just it, it dawned on me that sometimes when you're going through things, God doesn't, uh, want, listen, listen, God doesn't allow you to know everything because some of us don't understand or know how to understand bad news. Some of us take things that tests that God is putting us through and we make it, we make, we make the assumption that God is punishing us. But in this instance, I feel like God is just telling me that I need to sit down somewhere and rest. But it's the fact of the matter that I work by myself. I sleep by myself. I eat by myself. And since I've been by myself, yeah. I'm not dead. Nobody had to find me in nobody's yard. Nobody had to find me in my bed by myself. Nobody had to find me at my kitchen table. They didn't find me at my favorite Denny's on Laburnum Avenue in the, in, come on somebody. And I'm not trying to pump or prime you, but if God has never done anything for you in your life, be quiet. 
if God has never saved you from something in your life, be quiet. I come to tell you that the God that I serve He's still good. He's still good. Praise the Lord, saints. 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 I give God, I give honor to God who's the head of my life. I give honor to God who's the who's the head of my life. I give honor to God who's the head of my life, who is Jesus. I thank the Lord for allowing me to serve this one more time. I want to thank God for just protecting me, being a hedge of protection around my family, me. Uh, I just want to make my testimony as brief as possible. Last two week, the last week the storm hit, um, we were out of town. And Brittany was at home, and everybody knows Brittany's my daughter. And when I called home, she texted and said, call home, emergency, emergency, because she didn't go with us to Savannah. And when I called, Randall called home, she said a tree fell in the yard. Well, when I, she sent the picture of the tree, of course, it was a tree in my front yard. And if anybody's seen that tree, it's like a tree, like I would say, Abraham, it's been as an Abraham Lincoln. I would just say just being funny. But it was a big tree. And if you see the tree that fell, it fell on the opposite side of the house. If it fell back, it would have fell on my house. If it fell back, it would have fell on my bedroom because the tree was just that close to the bedroom. If it had fell on the side, my neighbor car, which is, they have the, the elderly neighbor that lives next to me, she has, her husband has Alzheimer's. Her son used to take care of him. She comes to take care of him like twice a week. His car is usually parked on that driveway. Well, when the tree fell, he wasn't there that day, and that car wasn't parked on the outside of the driveway. So, but that, my tree fell and covered her whole driveway. They couldn't even get out of the driveway because my tree was taking up the, the, uh, the driveway of the parking lot. And then when we filed the insurance claim, I work for insurance, so I know it's a percentage of your insurance that covers trees. So I was like, okay, well, the tree is not going to be covered for a certain amount. And I knew that tree, I said, it, it's gonna, it ain't going to be cheap to cut that tree down. Because, well, thank God, yesterday when Randall said he called, the lady said that she's going to pay for the whole entire tree removal. So I thank God that God is merciful in all he does. He does everything perfect. He's a good God. We are doing some great things for God, and we thank God for what he is doing. And we are on the threshold of God that's doing even greater things for us. Y'all believe it? Yes. And I said to you, don't believe what you see, because sometimes the devil will try to trick you. Preacher talking about going up, and look at like everything's going down. Well, that's just a test of your faith. Weeping may endure for the night. But joy gonna come in the morning. And sometimes the darkest hours of the night is just before daybreak. Hunt somebody said, day is breaking, day is breaking, day is breaking. Amen. We bless the name of our God. Amen. God is good. We're gonna, uh, at this time, we thank God for all that the Lord has done. We're gonna bless the Lord at this time with our tithes and offering. Let's get ready to bless the Lord. God, test us. God, test us. I said again, God, test us. And sometimes you think getting down to rent money. But Abraham had one son. And God asked him to give me your son. And Abraham was going to do what God asked him to do. And when the boy looked up and said, Dad, look at here. I'm familiar with this. I see the fire. I see the wood. Usually you got a lamb with you. I don't see no lamb. And Abraham told him, the Lord will provide himself a lamb. Amen. But I want to say to you, when God asks you for a sacrifice, it's because he got something bigger. And your gifting actually 
give him something big enough so he can give it back to you. He said, open the windows of heaven and I'll pour you out a blessing. You won't have room enough to receive. Tithing is a test. Say it with me, tithing is a test. Your love, your obedience, and your trust in God. Tithing is a test. But amen, pass the test. And see, won't God do what he said he's going to do? Standing all over the building. Let's get ready to give to a giving God. Father, we thank you for your loving kindness, your tender mercy. We thank you for these things here at Redeemed Assembly and how you blessed us. We've been blessed beyond so many. And for that, we don't take it for granted. We say thank you. Thank you, Lord, for the rent being paid. Thank you for the mortgage. Thank you, Lord God, for the lights not being turned off. You are a great God, and we thank you. Thank you for the trees not hitting the houses. Oh, glory, we thank you. We don't take it for granted. You are a great God. Thank you for sparing lives in Jesus' name. Now bless the gift, the giver, right now. Open the windows of heaven and pour out blessings. There will not be room enough to receive. We thank you now in Jesus' name. Amen. Let us come and give liberally, live, give generously. Amen to God. Lord everybody praise the Lord everybody I'm so glad to see you today don't we serve a mighty good God come on and stand up on your feet and sing this song with us today all right come on put your hands together do it again I like that Say, Lord, you're mighty. 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 Lord, you're mighty.
sister. Thank you for keeping my brother. Thank you for protecting us, protecting us all, God. And today, God, I give you all glory. I give you all praise. Today, Lord, I fall completely on your grace, on your ability, God. Lord, you be glorified. You be praised. You know exactly what each person needs, God. We ask that you meet the need in the name of Jesus. Prepare the heart, God. Let your word convict. God, let your word make free. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen, amen, amen. 
I want to, while you stand and come on and praise God for our pastors, Bishop and Lady Harris. Glory to God. We thank God for them. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And help me celebrate my honey, Frank Wilson. Hallelujah. And come on and just give God praise for each and every one of your brothers and your sisters. Hallelujah. And we thank God. We thank God for everything that's being done. And the, 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 name, the word from the Lord is make room, make room, make room. I want you to go tell three people and say make room. Make, make room. Make room. Come on, make room. Make room, make room, make room, make room. Make room. Make room. Come on, make room. Make room. Yes, yes, yes. Our scripture is coming from Mark chapter 2, verse, verse 22. New Living Transate, Translation. Lord, let my mouth be right. Yes, Lord. And no one puts new wine into old wine skins. For the wine would burst the wine skins and the wine and the skins will both be lost. New wine calls for new wine skins. And that is the word from the Lord. I'm just going to try to, you know, just try to go through and, 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 and expound upon it. But that is the word. Make room, make room, make room. Tell your neighbor, make room, make room, make room. Yes, yes. You can be seated if you can. My message is in is inspired by our bishop. He, he prophesied a few weeks ago, and uh, he says that in a few months, that God was going to tremendously bless us. Did he not say it? All right, so this is where I'm coming from today. And to me, that says that big things are about to happen. Blessings are about to happen. Things that we did not expect was about to happen. Things that we couldn't conjure up in our mind is about to happen. The question is this, are you expecting the blessing? Are you ready for the blessing? Have you made room for the blessing? In our text, Jesus is talking with the Pharisees and He's saying that you can't fuse the new message that I have with old traditions. If this is done, it will distort the new plan that I have for salvation. Jesus' way was unorthodox from the tradition. He was radical. He came with a new way, a new way, a new way to have relationship with God. The text was saying new wine does not go into old wineskins because the old wineskins had been stretched as much as they could. It was brittle. So if you put new wine in it, you're going to lose the wine skin as well as the wine. But you need new wine skins to receive the new newness of God. You need new wine skins because they are elastic and they will expand with the pressure that there is. Jesus brings new electricity to life, a new expansion, a new adventure, new excitement, a fresh start. That's what Jesus does. Things may not always be perfect. They will still have trials and tribulations. We'll still have trouble in our life. But the good thing about it is God will be with us. And he has a way that he's going to deliver. And most of the time, it's nothing that we thought of. He just makes a way. Hallelujah. So there's a few lessons, just two lessons I want to highlight today, and you might get more from the two, but there's two lessons I want to highlight today that we can learn from this text. The first thing is we got to get rid of the old. We keep doing the same thing. We got to get rid of the old. It is important to, first of all, to make room for Jesus in your life to make room for Christ in your life. You got to make him Lord of your life. We can't receive from what God has for us if we continue to do things our own way. 
We cannot hold on to old, limited thinking, trying to get something new. One of our biggest battles, and that's for all of us, is to just to fight containment. And containment is when the enemy, the devil, does everything he can to keep us from moving forward. He wants to paralyze you right where you are. But God is trying to get a blessing to you. So you got to make room. He wants to convince us to settle in, to settle for where we are. But God has some amazing things in the future for you. He will shoot thoughts to your mind like you will never be forgiving, given. You can't be used. You are inadequate. What you do does not matter. You will never be able to obtain the things that you desire. You will never get well. The doctor report is it, and we know that's a lie. You will never meet the right person to love, and I'm going to deal with that because God is still giving our husbands and he's still giving our wives come on somebody God's still doing it he'll say that you would always be alone but that is not true you are not worthy to be blessed but we know we declare him a liar in this place today he is fighting so hard he has because he knows what God has prepared for you and he don't want you to even get close to it the truth is that we desperately need the presence of God. We can't do it without him. And that's the problem. We surrender for a little while. Then we go right back to our old ways. We surrender for a little while. Then we go right back to sin. But God today want to permanently deliver you from where you are. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. We need to allow the Holy Spirit and the Word of God to change our minds, to change our lives. Because without it, we're going to keep going in our own way, doing what logically makes sense, doing what logically, you know, the next step, that's what we're going to do. But once we allow the Word of God working with the Holy Spirit into our hearts and into our our mind, our mind begin to expand. Our mind begin to say, God, I don't want to do it my way, but God, you said to do it this way, and then you were blessed that way. And so, God, I yield to you. We must give God permission to work in our lives to increase us. We are not going to see blessings of increase if we stay stuck. It is so necessary for us to recognize our patterns and our thoughts. We need to know what's hindering us. And some of us know what's hindering us. And sometimes things are so painful until we can't even utter it. But today I'm here to tell you that Jesus is here. And he can understand everything that you will give him, everything you will tell him. Once we recognize it, we must repent and ask God to help us to walk according to his word. Let's get rid of the weight and the sin that continually throw us off track. Let us get rid of the cycles that keep us going over and over the same thing. And some of us got generational curses that's trying to break forth in our household. But if you got the Holy Ghost and if you know God, and if you know his word, you got the power to cast out devils. You got the power to heal the sin. And if you touch any daily thing, oh, my God will. He will deliver. We have to acknowledge and forgive even the people that may have mistreated us. And, and we have to release ourselves of the past, past mistakes that you can't even think about it because it hurts you every time you think about it. But God is here. I'm telling you, God is 
here. Today, God wants you to, to go from mourning to joy. He wants you to go from maintaining and working to accomplishing what he has assigned you to do. He wants you to go from living in a state of numbness to being alive in Christ. He wants you to go from being unconscious about the things of God to being keenly aware of the things of God. He wants you to go from being bound to being free. Woo! He wants you to take the old song that you have and he wants to give you a new song. He wants to take your unforgiving heart and give you a loving heart. He, de he desires his desire is for you to live and not die. We must choose to go forward in our lives. We have to receive the love and the forgiveness that Christ gives us. Tell your neighbor, let your past go. Tell them again, let your past go. Give them some good news. God got something that he's trying to get to you. You may not see how, but God is going to turn things around for you. Follow him. Let him lead you. He's going to bring you right into your promise. The second thing we must do Create the capacity to receive. Now, I have, you know, my husband helped me come with, up with this because I thought I would have to bring all types of containers and things in here. And I just want to give you a visual. I'm just going to give you a visual. And, and let me make the statement before I go there, okay? New things are opposite from what the old thing. We serve a limitless God with unlimited supply. So here we go. So the problem is not the supply. The problem is some of the container, and I declare to you today, I believe the container is our thinking, okay? So, some of us got snack bags of thinking. Some of us got sandwich bags of thinking. Some of us got gallon bags of thinking. And some of us been away so long, we just believe God. Y'all got it? We just believe God. Now, I want y'all to remember this. <laughs> Thank you, Danielle. She taught me that I can do some odd stuff in the morning service. Amen. If I had, so, so basically what God, God wants to give you something great. But if you don't have the capacity, if you're not working on your thinking, if you're not exercising your faith, how is he going to bless you past where you are? That makes sense? Oh, glory to God. So if I had a thousand gallons of water to give you, but you only had one gallon container the problem is not the supply it is with the ability to receive if you got a larger container i could give you more it's the same principle with god if we think we can't we won't you have to get rid of the one gallon bucket thinking and realize that you serve a big god who has an unlimited supply all the resources in the world are his but it is according to your faith oh my god it's according to your faith now y'all i want to tell you about a story it's second kings chapter four verses one through seven okay so 
I'm sure you all have uh, read, but I'm not going to assume that. This is a story in 2 Kings chapter 4, verses 1 through 7. So there was a widow who was facing great crisis. She was married to a prophet. The prophet died, and he left her with a whole lot of bills. But she didn't have it. Now, I'm, I'm paraphrasing so we understand it. So she didn't have any money. She is distraught. And then she has two sons. So in that day when you didn't have money, either you sold your land off or you took the sons and you worked, or, or your children, and you worked off the debt that you had. So this lady, she didn't want that to happen. So she goes to the prophet Elijah. And the prophet had mercy and had compassion towards her. He asked her the question, what do you have in your house? She replied, a bottle of oil. He instructed her, go all around and borrow bottles from your neighbors. Don't borrow a few, but borrow as many as you can get. Thank you, Lord. So she went around. She borrowed all that she could get. She shut the door. Her and her son shut the door. And then she began to pour the wall all into the bottle. She would fill them all the way up to the brim. And she kept pouring. And she kept pouring. And guess what? God multiplied. He multiplied. Say multiply. He multiplied the oil. And the oil had to stop when she didn't have any more containers. I'm sorry, y'all. The word is good to me. Thank you, Jesus. God's word is amazing. Glory to God. She, she took that oil, she poured it, and she poured it. And then the next thing you know, the, the prophet said, after you get that oil, you go and sell it. Go sell your oil. Go ahead on and pay all your bills. But this is what God do. Not only did she have enough money to pay the bill, she had enough money for her living, her and her son's living expenses. And it don't even say when it ends. Well, God bless you. He blesses you. Mm. Woo! This teaches us that we must make room for abundance. She was the one that determined how much she received. Had she had 10 more, that all would have kept on going. You determine how much you can receive. That's why the prophet told her, don't ask for a little bit. Do you have barely get back? Do you have a barely get back container? Or do you have live in abundance container? Remember, God has unlimited supply. He is El Shaddai, God Almighty, the God who is more than enough. He is Jehovah Jireh, the God who provides. This is what I want you to do. Position, position yourself under the open windows of heaven. God is saved. God is about to do something great in your life. And he said, you need to get ready. I'm going to fill your container. Whatever you have made room for, God is going to fill the container. God has favor in your future. New opportunities, good breaks, blessings that will chase you down he has many ways that he wants to increase you and all you have to do is be begin to increase your capacity to receive you got to make room for Jesus he can give you a one good idea he can give you a promotion he can give you an inheritance he can fill you fill your container to overflowing all you gotta do is make room for him 
where you are in life is not where you're supposed to stay. Some of you, you done grew out where you are. You got, you know, you got young clothes on. Your, your, your pants are high water. Your, your shoes are busting up because you've been where you are for too long. Some of you, and as a plant, and when you, when you plant something, and when the plant has just had been there for too long, the, the, the roots started coming out of the pot. You know, they started curling up. And some of you are just like that. And you need to make room for your blessing. I know you're comfortable, but God trying to get something new to you. And, and that's what happened when we get in comfort. We start going in cycles. God is trying to get something to you. In my conclusion, today a new beginning is, can be launched in your life. Jesus came to die on the cross that none should perish but all should have everlasting life. He came that he would not, that we would not perish. He didn't want us to perish. He wanted us to live life and life abundantly. Not an ordinary life but an abundant life. We are going to face some obstacles along the way, but he will never leave or forsake us. According to Psalms 37 and 27, the, the Lord takes pleasure in the prosperity of his children. Okay. Thank you, Lord. I, I wasn't sure if that was up there. The Lord wants you whole and complete. Patience is required. Because I'm going to say this. To much whom is given, much is required. You have to be responsible, a good steward, over what God gives you. Today, there are some people in here that you have not uttered what is hindering you. And I'm just going to follow the direction of the Lord. There's some paper on the, the ushers have some paper. I want you to write down the one thing that's hindering you. I want you, we got some crowns and we got some paper. And I know this is odd, but I want you to write down the one thing you, that is hindering you. Write it down quickly, quickly. You know what's hindering you. You know the sin. You know the weight that's besetting you. I want you to quickly write it down. And I want you to ball the piece of paper up. I don't want to know. I want you to just write it down quickly, quickly, quickly. Thank you. know that one thing, that one thing, that one thing. Quickly write it down. What's that barrier? What's that, what's that blockage? Because the truth is it's not okay for you to be blocked. It's not okay for you to be bound. It's not okay for you not to do the will of God. And God wants you free. God wants you whole. Quickly, quickly, quickly. Uh, can I have our, our diggings to bring some baskets for me? Thank you, Jesus. Quickly, quickly. that one thing you know it you know it you don't always utter it but you know it okay everybody got it down Glory to God. I want you to ball this up and I want you to come to the 
I want you to bring it like Jesus himself is receiving your hindrance. Bring it, bring it with urgency. Bring it like I want to let it go. Bring it, bring it, bring it, bring it, bring it. Bring it, bring it, bring it, bring her. Glory to God. Bring it, bring it, bring it. Bring it, bring it, bring it, bring it. Throw it away. Release it. Throw it away. Release it. Bring it, bring it. Throw it away. Release it. Throw it away. Release it. Bring it, bring it, bring it. Bring it, bring it. Throw it away. Hell yeah. Release it, release it, release it, release it, release it, release it. I cast it on you, God. I cast it on you, God. I'm coming boldly to the throne of grace. I'm bringing it, I'm bringing it. Bring it, bring it, bring it, bring it. Huh? Glory to God. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, I cast it out. I cast it on you, God. I release it to you. Now I want you to stand up and I want you to release it to God. Hallelujah. Release it, release it. Release it, release it, release it, release it, release it, release it. Yes, I release it, God. I release it. I give it to you, God. I give it to you, God. I'm tired of holding on to it. God, I give it to you. Somebody say yes, Lord. Ah, yes, Lord. Yes to your will. Yes to your way. I will do it according to your will, God. Yes, Lord. No longer my way, but let your way huh, be reigned in my life, God. Let your will be done in my life. In the name of Jesus. Come on and give him praise like he already got it. Give him praise like he already done it. Give him praise. Give him praise. Hallelujah. Give him praise. Glory, glory. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Count it gone. He can do more with spit than a doctor can do with a scaffold. Woman couldn't see, he just spit in their eye. See, when God's spitting, it ain't nasty. <laughs> Tell your neighbor, when God spit, it ain't nasty. He's about to bring about a change. Make room. Make room. That means now making room for God means that a lot of the carnal things been ticking up all your time. You're going to start moving that stuff to the side so you'll have time to meditate, to pray, and praise. Meditate, pray, and praise. One more time. Meditate, praise, and amen. As we do that, we're going to see God doing great and mighty things. There's one more thing, one more instruction that God had given me. I want everybody to read Psalms 51 on this week. Psalm 51 on this week. You can read it in different versions, but it says, created me a clean heart. And heart and, and mind sometimes mean the same thing in the Hebrew language, but created me a clean heart, created me a clean mind, oh God. Read the whole chapter. Amen. If you want a blessing from God, you can believe there will always, always come with instruction. If there is no instruction, there will be no blessing. Amen. Because God wants us to act on, if you got faith, you got to have action. Faith without works is dead. All right. So let's get ready to move and do God's blessing. Do you think God can bless you? Say it with me, I am not beyond a blessing. I am not beyond a blessing. I'm a candidate for God's blessing. I'm ready for it right now. Amen. And let me tell you, 
what you say, your, your talk, what you say, what you say, you can either speak deliverance or you can speak defeat. Watch what's coming out of your mouth. Because what's coming out of your mouth will come into your life. What I say? What comes out of your mouth will what? Come into your life. So speak life into yourself. Sometimes I just walk around by myself. Somebody will think I'm crazy. I say, I'm blessed. And then I start walking like I'm blessed. I'm blessed. Amen. If you can't say you're blessed, who else going to say you're blessed? Hallelujah. Glory be to God. And the more people that think you're crazy, you're getting ready to show up then. Lord, they think I'm crazy. God said, all right, I'm about to prove myself to you. He's going to do some great and mighty things for you.